Hi, Geminis. Jupiter. So Jupiter is in the sign of Sagittarius. And as you know, uh, Sagittarius is opposite Gemini. So you guys have this relationship. An opposition has this quality of being kind of like a marriage between two parts. And with a, a marriage, we have two stories. Okay. So let's back up for a moment. If you're newer to astrology, what we're doing is anything that you have in Gemini, if you're brand new, just look at your sun. Okay. But you can actually apply this to any planet in your chart, your moon, your Mercury. If you want to look at your life through the lens of your Gemini Mercury, stick it in the first house and stick Jupiter in the seventh house. And this is going to apply to the way you understand mentally the world around you, communications that are sort of coming into you. So you might be receiving a lot of information from other people, a lot of opinions from other people, that sort of thing. Okay. So, um, Jupiter for you guys in the seventh. Now, Jupiter brings abundance, right? Blessings is the benefic planet and Venus is joining Jupiter this week. And it's like, Oh, yay, all this great good stuff. Yes, that's true. But it can also be, um, Venus can bring a little laziness with her when she joins Jupiter. Sometimes that can sort of be people, um, slacking off. So if you work with people, if you have people that you are um, partnering with or people that uh, they might be busy on a vacation or they might be playing right now, or they might be, um, experiencing, I, I, it just feels to me, it's a super productive time right now. Now, but overall, Jupiter in the seventh is going to bring more people into your world. It's at the same time with the square to Neptune, it's going to feel like herding cats. In particular, I do think you guys are experiencing uh, through work and career, an abundance of people who want to either partner with you, collaborate with you, come together with you, that want to offer you their ideas, their vision, their, their opinions, you know, they're bringing their truth to the table. Um, and so you're having to kind of cull the possibilities. You're having to kind of go through it and go, oh, okay, we need to pick and choose here because you maybe have too many things to choose from. It's a really good time to get clear though about your vision because you are receiving a lot of input and like I said, collaboration perhaps from other people outside of yourself. I wonder as well if back when we had, so back in 2000, what would this have been? 2000, let me go look at my little, my list here. It's 10, I'm saying, I want to say. Yeah, 2010. So 2010, we had J Jupiter was in Aries, okay? And, and then Jupiter, by 2011, you know, moved into uh, Taurus. And then at that point, 2011 to 2012, I, I believe it was right around there, was um, kind of hanging out in that sign of Taurus in your 11th, 12th house. You know, 12th house is where Taurus would be for Gemini. And that is a time where our sense of truth, our guiding principles, like what we believe in, if let's say we up to that point believed that it was all about making lots of money, let's just pretend. Okay. Jupiter goes into our 12th, enters our 12th house and something happens where that belief is challenged. That belief is perhaps, um, we are introduced to our own behavior that maybe has been self undoing the things that we have been doing in our life that maybe have been a bit unraveling to us. And a lot of times if we accepted like a job or if we took on a project during that year, it might not have been right for us. And then once Jupiter moved into the sign of Gemini, you may have realized, okay, yeah, that wasn't the right path for me. I need to be focusing more on what's really true for me. What's, what's my truth. Okay. And like, I've got a good friend who's a Gemini and his big journey has been one from where he used to be someone who was focused on making money and, and, um, you know, he's got a, a Venus in Taurus. So he likes nice things. He likes valuable things. And that gives him a sense of feeling safe and secure. It's also like, he feels like he knows he's got gifts in that area. He know, like knows how to be charming and to like make money basically. Okay. <clears throat> so he's, he's good with people. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, with him, he experienced some things with his business and, and lawsuits and other things that caused him to ch a, a change in fortune, right? Jupiter does have to do with your fortune in the 12th house. That can be sort of the loss of your fortune or the absence maybe, or the whatever dissolving away of if your fortune 
where do you put your where do you put your value where's your wealth is it in stuff material things is it in friendships is it in relationships where is it so anyway for some people it can be their beliefs their faith that being sort of taken from you them losing your religion okay i i started a job I had an opportunity afforded to me and I started a job that I thought would be a more secure path for me and it, but it involved a lot of travel and I was away from my kids a bunch and that went squarely against my personal values um, as a stay-at-home mother. I, I have my job and I feel so blessed that I can be a single mom but be at home. You know, so, so I'm here for my kids as, as much as I can be. So anyway, Gemini's, I feel like you guys, um, after you experienced the Jupiter on your sun, that was maybe a time of repackaging yourself in more in better alignment with who it is you feel that you are and my friend for example he's got a moon in Pisces see so like that's a very selfless um, it's a moon that has a lot to do with love and, and unconditionally loving and showing up for people even when you might not get anything in return even when they might take advantage of you so he definitely um, has been learning a lot about that path so depending on the rest of your chart of course now for you guys now that Jupiter has made its way Jupiter's been moving through the whole bottom half of, of the Gemini horoscope, which is personal and subjective. It's your your personal vision, your personal world, like your worldview. What's your dream that you want to promote in your world and in your life? And how are you building it? How are you working towards it? And so you guys have been on this path. You had um, about, oh gosh, let's see. I'd say in about two, what would it have been? When Jupiter was kind of hanging out in Virgo, um, would have been a tricky year, trickier year for you guys. So perhaps like around 2014, I want to say. I don't have the ephemeris pulled up right here. I'm just like remembering from some other notes. 2013, 2014, it doesn't matter. But anyway, you would have had a time where there were some, what do I, what are my commitments that I've made to my family? Where do I need to sacrifice on behalf of maybe if you have children? Um, with your living arrangements, maybe you needed to downsize, maybe you had some changes and some humbling experiences in the area of like your actual literal domestic scene, you know, that's possible. Or maybe you were working more from home. Um, there's lots of, that's also a literal possibility. Okay, but now we've moved all the way, we're opposite. Now we've got Jupiter opposite Gemini. It's come kind of 180 degrees even more so because it was in your 12th house, right? So it's moved to this position where it's a reflection. We're looking back on something that happened that we sort of were, that had to do with our beliefs about life and meaning. Why do I do what it is that I do? What's my driving motivator? Is it God? Is it, um, a, what, what's my God? What are, what do I believe is the truth about life? You know, am I conscious about that? Or do I just randomly, you know, wander through life, letting my unconscious drivers direct me, which is, you know, not always a good way to go. So, okay, you guys now, so now you have the chance, the other people bringing in to your world, they're bringing their experiences. And we've got this big shift collectively, Uranus is moving into Taurus. So people have been experiencing, Uranus is trining Jupiter, their own individuation process. That's just human nature. We all are on that path. But like, you've got people who have come to their own realizations. We've got a square to Neptune right now, so people might really be believing and buying into this, not buying into, that's not the right word, but people are looking for meaning. And so people are on that path and they're searching for it and they're sensing there's an absence of meaning. Why do we do what it is we do? So Geminis are being tasked with right now, having to put words to, defining, like, I don't know. Like, why are we doing what it is that we do? Is there meaning behind it? You know, those big kind of existential questions. Relationships could be an area where you have like like romantic relationships. You could have people coming into your space that are like an, you could have a, an abundance for sure. But again, it's like you're being um, a lot isn't necessarily a good thing, right? It's like quality versus quantity. So really figuring out for yourself and getting clear about the type of, of person you are, um, the type of relationships you'd like in your life, whether they're work or personal, um, and, and meaning, you know, meaning and direction. Where are you going? I said that for Gemini this year, it's like, who's flying this, who's driving this flying umbrella? It's kind of the theme for you guys, because it is, it's very much like 
all this input coming from other people and other places and and you needing to kind of organize it and figure it out for yourself while you have Neptune squaring you, which is like makes things feel very hard to put together. It can make your life feel like it's all over the place and like it's, you know, it's like, ah, things are just, it's like herding cats, you know, ah, everything's juggling, I'm juggling all these balls at once and it's, it's a little much. So, um, but it's gonna allow you maybe to, because Gemini, of course, slowing down, meditation, connecting. You're not gonna necessarily maybe have the answers that you've had in the past, or maybe your old answers to the big questions aren't satisfying you anymore. So maybe you want to tap into the divine. Maybe you want to meditate. Maybe you want to tap. Maybe you want to pray more. Maybe you want to tap into your spirit guides, or like if you believe in, um, it's, I don't know. People have different places where they're at and what they believe in. I don't care what you believe in. That's for you to decide. I could give a rat's ass, but you need to believe in something. You could be an atheist and believe in the the magic. The mystery of life. We have plenty of things that are absolutely awe-inspiring, just through biology that we can and physics. You know, things that we don't understand, uh, like quantum physics. That that's enough to leave your brain like ah, inspired. So whatever that is, getting into that place where um, I just kind of feel like also this year maybe don't make any like huge decisions. I mean, I I don't know. You can't. I don't really believe in using astrology to like trick the fates, so to speak. That's not what it's about. It's about understanding just, oh, this is why I'm here. What am I supposed to be learning right now? Oh, maybe I should be trying to get quiet like once a day for just a few minutes and going inward and opening up because you guys have an ability to put messages into words in a way that is, no one can do it like a Gemini. So taking that time to get quiet, to filter out all those noises, get off of me, get away, people, so that you can meditate and go inside of yourself and really hear, okay, okay, that's my voice that I'm hearing right now, not all this cacophony outside of me. That's my voice. Also, anything that has to do with escapist behavior because of the Neptune square, really good time. Escapist behavior can be through anything. I mean, it can be drinking, pornography, la la la, you know, all those things. And I'm not saying this out of nothing to say, like, to make people feel ashamed or feel like, oh, I suck. Not like that. But, like, there's a reason. There's a reason why we go on that path. And it's because the, the, the mind, the unconscious, or the soul, even, is trying to come out. It's trying to, when you drink, for example, there's a process with drinking. Where, well, I went unconscious. See, that's a perfect example. When you drink, things get blurry, right? And things get blurry and things get, um, things come to the surface that wouldn't normally be there. We do things we wouldn't normally do. Okay. And there's an element there of, it's because there's a process that your, your psyche is trying to undergo. Part of you is trying to break free and break out of old chains and old habits. And, and, and we might not be letting it because we're keeping things so busy and loud in our world. So getting really grounded in yourself and in your own inner voice, because that's the gift you guys have, is that ability to help the rest of us see the world in a new way. Like you put things, you spin things and put them in a new perspective for the rest of us and inspire us to like, oh, that is wonderful. I never thought about it that way. And you also help us laugh. The humor that the Gemini can bring, you know, it's needed. So, okay. Thanks, Geminis. Okay. <laughs>